Hey, this is Mr. Corsi. Today's lesson I'd like to call Pencil to Digital. What we're going to learn about today is drawing something on a sheet of paper and digitizing it and using the live trace and live paint tools in Adobe Illustrator to trace and color something that used to be on paper into a nice digital drawing. For example, I went ahead and drew something up real quick on paper. When drawing, try to blacken and darken out the outer edges. Make sure there's no openings. Everything's closed up. Erase all the stray marks. You could either scan it, which is probably the best option, or just take a picture with your phone and digitize it to get it on the computer to pull into Illustrator. Once you do that, you can pull it into Adobe Illustrator and through the Live Paint tool, come up with a pretty nice coloring of what you drew by digitizing it. So let's get started. First thing is I'm going to open up my drawing in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to get the navigator, shrink it up a little bit, and adjust the artboard to match the size of the image. Once you've got the image set inside the artboard, next thing you can do is just go up, get the selection tool, and the image has to be selected, and then you just click Image Trace. Click OK and it starts going through the tracing process. Now this isn't finalized. What you really need to do is go to the image trace panel. Click right up here. Click the image trace panel. And in the image trace panel, you have a bunch of different options. I always like to go under advanced and play with it a little bit. Now preview is on, so it's giving you a preview of what it'll look like once it's finalized. Now I always increase the threshold. You got to play around with it because sometimes it'll smudge it out too much like that. I always go to the pass and I move it to the right, move the corners to the right, and then drop the noise down. And you can always play with the strokes and feels. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I'm going to choose ignore white and I got to lower the uh, threshold back. Now if you got color drawings or whatever, stuff with color, you can mess with some of this. I like to keep it black and white and I'm going to adjust that. I think uh, about 152 is probably where it's going to have to be. Now I can erase all this. I like to get it a little bit darker on the edges. If you don't get it exactly perfect, it can still be fixed. What you don't want to see is some gaps like that there, especially when you want to like fill it in with color because it'll bleed into over there. Looks like it can't be helped with this specific scan of this drawing. So to finalize it, you got to go to the top and click expand and now it, it totally vectorized your whole drawing. You can see all these anchor points. It's ready to color. You want to go through and remove some stuff. Now I'm going to press K. I'm going to get the transparent, say no stroke, and I'm just going to turn that to transparent and that to transparent and that to transparent. And then I'm going to click away. So that looks a little bit better. I'm going to go through and clear some of that out in a little bit later. I find myself I have to close these gaps. Let me show you what happens if this doesn't work right. I'm going to press K and I'm just going to choose a color. Now it tells you, gives you a preview of what it's going to color. So that's highlighted and I click and it fills it with the color I want. Now see what I told you about the opening right there? It fills both of those, but you can see there's a hole right there and it's going to bleed into the rest of it. You don't want to click on that and then turn the whole page green. So I'm going to undo that. Let me show you how to fix some of these problems if you have gaps. Fixing the gaps is pretty easy. You can get the pencil tool, line tool, or pen tool and just kind of trace over these lines. I'm going to get the pen tool and I'm going to press D to get my default colors, get a transparent feel. I'm going to change my stroke to about seven. All right, so I see a lot of gaps here. So I'm going to get the pen tool 
and I'm gonna start right there and click there and I'm going to just kind of go along that line and basically I just made my own line right there and I'm gonna click there to close that corner and I could even go straight across and do another line now I'm gonna command click away to, to get off of that and I'm gonna click here and here just kind of trace over that to close that gap and then hold down command click away I'm gonna click here <coughs> Click, stretch that there, and go here, and then close. Oh, I'm gonna close that, and then click right there. Just kind of repairing some of the missed gaps. fix a few things real quick there and my command click away click here there you go so I close that gap I'm gonna go select all and I'm gonna click merge live paint Merge Live Paint, and it merges all your strokes. So now if I press K to get the Live Paint tool, it closes that so it doesn't bleed into the background. There must be a gap somewhere in here. I think it's right there, it sure is. I'll fix that in a minute. The smart thing to do when coloring is to get some swatches that you know you're gonna use. You just go window swatches and you got your swatches panel and then you got a nice little open swatch library you can get the the focal tone which has a lot of nice colors now if you have some colors that you want to use regularly like I know I want to use this pink I'm gonna drag it here and that darker color there and I might use this green use a black maybe a red so just kind of pick some colors now there's also other watches that's alligator cheetah elephant giraffe jaguar peacock that's snake i'm gonna drag that right there see i can fill it in with a snake pattern i kind of like the alligator one better i'm gonna use that just get the colors you want and drag it into the swatches panel you can go through and fix some mistakes on there. Let's talk about dealing with these extra lines and stuff that's not wanted. To get rid of it, it's kind of tricky. You can get the erase tool, hit your brackets next to the P, increase your brush size, And get rid of as much as possible at once and then it'll show the progress click here and go through there get rid of those okay so let's talk about the lines within the colored areas it's a little bit more difficult to get rid of you can use your eraser tool but watch what happens oh that seemed like that worked let's go through and erase some of that Maybe clean up some of those edges there. Okay, so it left like an empty spot, and you don't want that, especially if you're filling with a gradient. So I got the direct selection tool. The shortcut is A. And all you got to do now is select the area that you made with your eraser with the direct selection tool and press delete. And it creates a gap so you got to click one of the anchor points 
to get it to open up and the, the coloring will bleed into it now you, if you want to get rid of it you, you have to do it a few anchor points at a time it's a little annoying it can be made to work say if you get the selection tool it just grabs the whole group but the direct selection tool grabs it individually. The best thing to probably do is just get the eraser and erase as much as you can, and then you might have to go and get rid of some of these white spots with the direct selection tool. I'm gonna get the eraser tool and go right here, and I you can clean up some of these edges if you want. So it made another open area. I'm just going to just keep erasing. Let me show you a problem that you might run into with coloring with these gaps. You, you might think, why don't you just fill it in with green? Let me get a swatch gradients and go to metals. I'll drag that in. All right, I'm gonna press K. Now, if you fill that in, it only applies the gradient to right there. So let me command and click away. You can tell that's a different area. So you don't want that. So what you have to do is delete one of the anchor points, open it up so the previous color bleeds into it. Now you can't see the erased area. Just a few tricks on how to clean some of that up. This supposed to bleed into that so I'm gonna click on that anchor point there you go now they all bleed in together I'm gonna give myself a zebra hat now it kind of looks cool to kind of use like a uh, gradient for the three-dimensional outside layers. I'm gonna to go to the gradient panel and choose black, drag that away. I'm gonna drag that in my swatches. See how that kind of works. Totally missed the outside curve on that O. Okay, so I have an opening right there, so I can't color it. So I need to fix that. We used the pen tool last time. I'm, that would be my preference, but I want to show you that you can use a pencil tool to close these gaps as well. Let's go over here and get the pencil tool. Increase my stroke weight to seven. And you can just draw and close these gaps. Like I said, I'd rather use the pen tool for this, but the pencil tool will work. So you just use the pencil tool, close the gaps, and then go select all. Merge live paint. Click OK. Press K. And now it lets you fill in the area you want. So you can pretty much draw and scan anything you want. There might be a little bit of tweaking that needs to be done. If you know the right steps, you can easily fix some things. Like my original example I showed you, I just created a gradient background. Got some shades of red and pink to kind of make it look like a tongue and the C's like a snake. One trick on this one I will disclose to you. I selected this area, copied and pasted. You can't make a gradient with a pattern. I, what I had to do was I copied and pasted that area and I just made this transparent the white zero opacity with black and filled it in so it kind of just shaded the black right there 
and it turned out real nice. That is using the live paint and live trace tool. Just play around and have fun. This can also be used on coloring pages that you can download coloring page images from the internet and color them and do the same thing. Or if you like to draw, you can draw it and scan it and use the live trace and live paint tool on them as well. And that's all there is to it. Hey class, if you like this video, please click like below and subscribe to this channel. Also, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.